Good morning. We begin now with the great litany. Please kneel as you are able. O God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Ghost, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers. Neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord. Spare thy people whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood. And by thy mercy, preserve us forever. Spare us, good Lord. From all evil and wickedness, from sin and the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation, good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity, good Lord, deliver us. From all inordinate and sinful affections, from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil, good Lord, deliver us. From all false heresy, doctrine, and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of thy word and commandment, good Lord, deliver us. From lightning, tempest, and earthquake, from fire and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine, good Lord, deliver us. From all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. By thine agony and bloody sweat, and by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost, good Lord, deliver us. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church universal in the right way, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to send forth laborers into thy harvest, and to draw all humankind into thy kingdom, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give to all people increase of grace to hear and receive thy word, and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee, and diligently to live after thy commandments, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the ways of truth, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give and to preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings, to do the work thou, which thou hast given us to do, with singleness of heart as thy servants, and for the common good, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to, pre to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to have mercy upon all humankind, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, 
and to endue us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant to all the faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant that in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and afflictions of sinful people, sinful people, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest and desire the thing which thou dost promise so that among the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many living in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to, them, o, say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 130, we will say it together. Out of the depths 
have I called you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, in his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than not watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from their sins. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is dead, but to set the mind on the spirit of on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, and it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give you life to your mortal bodies, also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The Word of the Lord. Please stand. Many a time have they fought against me from my youth up. Let Israel now say, yea, many a time have they vexed me from my youth up. But they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed upon my back and made, a lo and made long furrows. But the righteous Lord hath hewn the snares of the ungodly in pieces. Let them be confounded and turned backward, as many as have evil will, as many as have evil will at Zion. The Holy Gospel, our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of, Be Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister, Mar sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. Mary, the, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after, her hearing, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you are going there again? Those who walked during the... Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was real, referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Mar Mary and Martha to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she, sent, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, 
Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went, went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I speak to you in the name of the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you are standing, you may be seated. We just heard the longest passion in the longest passage in our lectionary. The longest will be read next week, the Passion of Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. But today's reading for the fifth Sunday of in Lent describes a pivotal event leading that actually led to the events that we will hear about next week on Palm Sunday, Sunday of the Passion. Today is known as Passion Sunday because it is the beginning of what we call Passion Tide. Passion Tide. We begin, we we begin our direct attention to focus, we begin to focus our attention on this Sunday away from our own sin and brokenness toward the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, toward the journey that Jesus, the Anointed One, will take that will lead to our redemption. And salvation. The story of the raising of Lazarus, which appears only in the gospel according to John, was the straw that broke the camel's back for the religious authorities that wanted to rid, the, rid themselves of this troublemaker they called Jesus of Nazareth. It was the event that led Jesus straight into Jerusalem and straight up to Golgotha. But this story of Jesus, Mary, and Martha, and Lazarus is a story of incredible love that juxtaposes, places side by side, the reality 
of Jesus' humanity and his divinity. The relationship that Jesus had with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus was a relationship of deep and profound love. The Gospels take us into their home more than once. It was Mary who sat at Jesus' feet, while Martha worked frantically to prepare a meal and show their hospitality. It was Mary who anointed the feet of Jesus after he came from a long journey with oil and wiped them dry with her hair, while Judas Iscariot scolded her for using expensive nard. We can presume that his visit this time was one of many visits that he made to this family. So I can only imagine the profound anguish that Jesus must have felt when he received the news that his dear friend Lazarus was near the point of death. It doesn't take a rocket science scientist to feel the desperation that Mary and Martha felt when they sent word to Jesus begging for help. And even though he seems to blow them off at first, clearly he knew what he was about to do. He knew that he was going to demonstrate the mighty power of God and his own divine nature through the dire situation involving Lazarus. Clearly, he knew the risks he was taking to his own life in this action because he, already knew, he was already on the Jews' hit list. The story tells us that he stayed an extra two days. He wanted to make sure Lazarus was dead dead. But there are two important things to note in this story. First, G Mary met Jesus on the road where he told her that he is the resurrection and the life. Those powerful words we hear at the beginning of our own burial office at funerals from the Book of Common Prayer. Upon hearing this, Martha proclaimed the main point of this story, to proclaim to the world that Jesus is the Messiah and that he is the key to eternal life. Yet in the midst of this magnificent declaration of Jesus' divinity, he shows human vulnerability. Jesus wept. John 11, chapter 11, verse 35, is the shortest ver verse in the Bible. He wept. He showed himself to be vulnerable. He showed his most human of emotions. And from the depths of his most human self, he launched. No, he catapulted his most divine self and raised Lazarus from the dead. This was a foreshadowing of the same act that he himself would do on the cross. From the depths of his humanity, he would die. And from that, catapult his divinity onto the world through his resurrection. The second thing to note in this story is that it is a story about love. This story shows the profound love that Jesus had for his family and for this from this point of love, he went out of his way to perform the greatest of miracles for them, the raising of their dear brother and his close friend from the dead. He went out of his way to risk his own safety by returning to Bethany, a town just two miles east of Jerusalem, where the religious authorities were after him. Out of love, he met Mary and Martha in their grief, he shared in that grief and then raised Lazarus from the dead. He went there to demonstrate God's awesome power over everything, even death. You can imagine that the news of what happened spread quickly. And in the Gospel according to John, it is the key. The raising of Lazarus is the key event that led Jesus to Jesus' upcoming arrest to his passion and his death. Yet another event, his death, yet another event where his divinity will come face to face 
with his humanity and where God's power over death will again be revealed in Jesus' own resurrection. In today's gospel, we see death placed side by side with life. Death and life placed next to each other. And we love running through the, and we love, and we see love running through the entire story. The entire world is shut down right now. Here in New York, and in just about everywhere else in this country, we are stuck in our homes, isolating ourselves to help get a handle on this pandemic that has brought humankind to its knees and our regular lives to a halt. As we still see the number of coronaviruses, as we still see the number of coronavirus cases increasing, as we hear about more and more people dying in hospitals from the complications of this terrible viral infection while we await a vaccine and a definitive treatment, it would be so easy to lose faith or to ask how a God of love could let something like this happen. It would be easy to feel desperation that God has forgotten the world, that God has abandoned us, that God, or that God is somehow punishing humanity for its wretched sinfulness. But being in relationship with God and knowing Jesus Christ as the Messiah doesn't mean that adversity isn't going to fall upon us sometimes. Even Mary and Martha's being in relationship with Jesus didn't prevent Lazarus from dying, but rather Jesus met them where they were. Jesus met them in the midst of their distress and grief and got them through it. For us today, going through a rough and scary time, trying to get a hold of the COVID-19 pandemic, trying to get a hold, uh, to, trying to hold it together, being stuck in our homes, struggling to, dealing, struggling to deal with people continuing to get sick and even dying. God meets us where we are in the midst of our tribulation and will get us through it. Jesus constantly reminds us in Scripture that knowing him ultimately leads to life. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. At this time, we need to be focusing on love. Love for each other, love for our families, love for our neighbors. And love for our neighbors right now takes the place of staying in our homes so the virus can be contained. And it doesn't have to be so bad. You know, I'm one of those people that takes lemons and makes lemonade out of it. This is a great time to reconnect with our families. This is a great time for parents to connect with their children by teaching them. Parents are now called upon to homeschool their kids. Get out of this idea that the schoolhouse is somehow a babysitter that teaches them something. Be partners with your children's be partners with your children's education. Help them learn the stuff in the curriculum. That's very important. Reading, math, history, whatever else is on the list. But don't stop there. Teach them life skills. This is a great time to teach them how to cook, how to do their laundry, so they don't come home from college with a big bag of uh, laundry for you to do. Teach them how to fix things around the house. Teach them how to manage finances. Teach them the things that we have to deal with in daily adult life. Uh, and for those of you who have teenagers, for the things that they have to deal with in teenage life as well. Get to know each other. Talk to each other. Find out what makes, what makes you who you are. What makes you, you. Because it's a, and it's a great time to get to know, know each other, to get to know God, and to rediscover how great, wonderful, and complex creation 
we are. We have been spending so much time isolating ourselves in our modern world with social media. No longer talking on the phone, but texting. No longer interacting, but getting our information from the internet instantly. Well, technology is not a bad thing. In fact, in our state of isolation, it's a great opportunity for us to connect with the outside world. It's a great way for us to stay in touch. I'm seeing such creative ways that we are trying to connect. Phone calls to each other, Zoom chats between families, even the church whose very existence is rooted in people gathering together, the assembly, the ecclesia. Even the church is exploring how to connect by Zoom meetings and even services by Zooms and live streams like we're doing today. This is an opportunity that we can take to reconnect with our humanity, reconnect with our connection to each other, to ourselves, and to God. We can turn what could be desperate moments into opportunities to show our love for each other and for, by caring for each other, even if it's nothing more than a phone call to say, how are you doing? Are you okay? The lesson for today as we enter Passion Tide is to remember that even in the midst of the uncertainty of life, even in the midst of our lowest moments, God meets us where we are to be present with us, to walk alongside us, to console us, and to get us through whatever we're facing. This too shall pass. And when we come out on the other side of it, it will mean new beginnings in a number of ways. It may even mean a second chance for some. Because Jesus reminds us that even death, even when things in our lives come to a stopping point or an end, death leads to life. Ends usher in new beginnings. When all of this is said and done, hopefully, we will all be new people. Hopefully, we will be a new world, a world of love, a world concerned with the welfare of each other, a world showing God's love everywhere. Amen. Now please stand, if you are able and participating, as we proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God from God, light from light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by him all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Ghost, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man, for our, and was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and have
have and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, walking from henceforth in his holy ways, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and make your humble confession unto Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness to all those who, with hearty repentance and true faith, turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. So if anyone should sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. You may stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with thy spirit. Peace. What follows is the Lord's Supper. This is God's feast for all of God's people. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, please know that to God's table you are welcome. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation, for through thy goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth hath given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation, for through thy goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Mass this morning is offered to the glory of God in thanksgiving for all of his many blessings. May these offerings, we beseech thee, O Lord, loosen the bonds of our wickedness and obtain for us the gifts of thy mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, who didst bid thy faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by thy word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which thou hast prepared for those who love thee. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks unto thee, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my cup of the new covenant, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, and for many for the remission of sins. As oft as ye shall drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, According to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and in whom, 
In the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. By the commandments, by the blood of the Lord, deliver us to God. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who taketh away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. For those who cannot receive the Blessed Sacrament physically, you are invited to receive Jesus spiritually by making an act of spiritual communion. Please join in the following prayer. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace thee as though thou wert already there, and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. O God of hope, in this Eucharist we have tasted the promise of thy heavenly banquet and the richness of eternal life. May we who bear witness to the death of thy Son also proclaim the glory of his resurrection, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this thy people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know thee more fully and to serve thee with a more perfect will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.